Well, I got my notes, check. Sunglasses, check. Hat, check. Pepsi, check. Thick skin, check. Let's go. Hey, welcome to Golden Blue Dude, everybody. If you're a college football fan, might as well hit the like and subscribe button because that's all we do over here. Go check out our Patreon page. We call our Patreons the Shot Callers because that's exactly what they do around here. And when the regular season gets here, our Patreons will get to decide which game we'll live stream and you'll get to watch with Golden Blue Dude. And the score prediction contest will be coming back. Every week I pick out a game and my Patreons guess the score and whoever comes closest to the score wins 20 bucks every single week and you can win as many times as you want. The higher the Patreon, the more guesses you get per week. Of course, as a West Virginia fan, the number one question that I get asked is, what happens to West Virginia? West Virginia is in a position that's unique to West Virginia. Yes, we are in a Power 5 conference, a Power 5 conference that's looking to expand, but the problem is we don't fit in that Power 5 conference. And if they expand and get some Pac-12 teams, we would fit in even less. So the question still remains, what happens to West Virginia? Well, there's three options that could happen to West Virginia. The first option, stay in the Big 12, but the Big 12 must also get Louisville, Pitt, Virginia Tech, and Syracuse to offset the Pac-12 gains to help with travel. I mean, it's fine that the Big 12 goes out and gets some teams from the Pac-12. Honestly, that's what the Big 12 needs to do. It is in their best interest. But the Big 12 and West Virginia have conflicting interests. It's bad for West Virginia. Our travel is already horrific. So that's not in the best interest for West Virginia. But West Virginia is in the Big 12. Do you see the dilemma that West Virginia is in? So as long as the Big 12 tries to poach the ACC and get some teams out of the ACC and offset the gains from the Pac-12, then I'm okay with that. We keep expanding, you get teams out of the Pac-12, you get teams out of the ACC, West Virginia stays in the Big 12. All is well in Morgantown. What about the second option? Well, the second option is go to the ACC with Notre Dame and then the ACC picks off the Big 12. Look, ESPN favors the SEC and the Big 10 by far, but if they were forced to choose, hey, do you want the Big 12 to exist or do you want the ACC to exist? They'll pick the ACC because they have a deal. So even ESPN would back this up more than West Virginia in the Big 12. Now, if the grant of rights get broken and Notre Dame comes in with NBC, that's a whole different battle. That would be between NBC and ESPN. Then there's the third option, probably the best option for West Virginia. And that's just get picked up by the SEC. Of course, everybody wants to be in the SEC unless you're already in the Big 10. But for West Virginia, that would be the ideal situation. Problem is, you just sit back and hope that they send you an invite because they were very, very close back in the first go around. It was Texas A&M, then either or Missouri and West Virginia. And two days before the SEC was about to extend the invite to West Virginia, ESPN goes, no, actually we want the Kansas City TV market extended to Missouri. So voila, the SEC extended it to Missouri. So West Virginia has been on the table. And from what I'm hearing, they're on the second four team list. The first four teams, Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and Virginia. The second four teams would be West Virginia, Miami, Virginia Tech, and Oklahoma State. And then yesterday I put out a video saying that Oklahoma State and the SEC were talking. So that makes sense as well. This is what really frustrates me. The disrespect for West Virginia. As a West Virginia fan, you, you just don't know what we go through. I mean, it, it's really ridiculous. The stereotyping. They don't realize the TV markets that we bring in. Yes, we carry the whole state of West Virginia, but we also carry a great chunk of the city of Pittsburgh. In the city of Pittsburgh, it's one Penn State, two West Virginia, and three Pitt. Yes, that's right, West Virginia above Pitt in their own city. And West Virginia also carries the city of Washington, D.C. So we do have some big city TV markets that we bring with us. I made a video where I said West Virginia was tied for number one in revenue in the Big 12. They're actually number two. That was an estimated revenue. If you break it down exact dollars, Kansas is actually ahead of West Virginia by a couple of hundred thousand. So West Virginia is actually number two in the Big 12 in revenue. But still, that is a top money making revenue in the Big 12. And that would most certainly hurt the Big 12. And West Virginia is top 25 all time in these categories. Football winning percentage, 
football total wins, basketball winning percentage, basketball total wins. Only Notre Dame and Texas can say that. I bet that surprised you. And there's a lot of people that say, well, West Virginia's never sniffed the national championship in college football. Well, since I've been born, West Virginia has actually sniffed a national championship three times. There was 1988 when we actually got to the national championship. Major Harris injured his leg in the first quarter and we lost to Notre Dame. Then there was 1993 when we went undefeated and we got snubbed. Florida State got put in over West Virginia to face Nebraska in the national championship. And then of course 2007 whenever we came one game away from getting to the national championship and everybody, not just West Virginia fans, are sure that West Virginia would have won the national championship that year. So three separate times, yes, West Virginia has sniffed a national championship since I've been born. You take West Virginia and Oklahoma State out of the Big 12, that is another massive, massive blow for the Big 12. And of course, ESPN doesn't want the Big 12 to exist because Fox owns the TV rights to the Big 12. So yes, ESPN would most certainly be interested in West Virginia Probably a combo of West Virginia and Oklahoma State. But back to the disrespect. So there was odds put out on who would accept next invite to either the Big Ten or the SEC. So this is assuming that a team is invited by either the Big Ten or the SEC and then they accept that invitation to either the Big Ten or the SEC. So here it is for Big Ten. Number one, Notre Dame. Well, from what I'm hearing, Notre Dame is staying pat right now at least for 2022. So another year goes by and Notre Dame is not a part of any conference, but they're number one in the odds of accepting the next invite. Number two is Oregon. And from what I'm hearing, the Big Ten actually isn't even interested in Oregon. So I don't know why they're this high up on the list unless they're thinking Notre Dame and Oregon. But if you bring in Notre Dame, it's not gonna be Oregon. It'll be Notre Dame and Stanford. Next on the list, Washington. Same situation as Oregon. This doesn't make sense than Kansas. That actually does make sense. I think Kansas does bring value to the Big Ten. They fit in perfectly. They have a great basketball program, but their football kind of knocks them down a peg or two. Next up on the list, Cincinnati. This makes absolutely no sense. No offense to my Cincinnati subscribers. I appreciate your support, but you should not be this high on the Big Ten's acceptance list, especially for odds. Uh-uh, it's just not gonna happen. Ohio State would never, ever let that happen. Right below Cincinnati, North Carolina. This actually makes sense, except the SEC is interested in North Carolina first. Now, if that falls apart, I think North Carolina could most certainly go to the Big Ten. Makes a lot of sense. Next is Arizona. I I'm not even going to talk about that. That makes no sense whatsoever. UCLA and USC, yes, way far out west for the Big Ten, so geography is off the board. But Arizona really doesn't bring anything for the Big Ten. Then there's Duke. I mean, as long as North Carolina says, hey, you got to bring Duke with us, then I wouldn't consider Duke as well. Oklahoma State. I actually think Oklahoma State should be higher on this list. They meet all the requirements. They're a pretty good research university, and they have AAU status. I would have them above Kansas, Cincinnati, North Carolina, and Arizona, and even Duke. Then there's Stanford. Stanford should be much higher because the only way the Big Ten is bringing in Notre Dame is with Stanford. So if Notre Dame's at number one, Stanford should be number two. And then there's Cal. Uh, I mean, I guess it's okay being on the list, and they are this slow, but whatever. West Virginia isn't on this list, and I'm actually okay with that because I don't think that would happen. Not at all. West Virginia doesn't fit in at all in the Big Ten. So this part, I'm actually okay with. I don't feel any type of disrespect. It's whenever we come to the SEC. Here's the odds for the next teams to accept an invite to the SEC. Clemson, number one. Makes perfect sense, absolutely. Miami, number two. Did they make this list before the news earlier in the week where Miami was not even on the first four? Otherwise, that doesn't make sense. Number three, Florida State. Yes, I would agree. I would put Florida State at number two, actually. Number four, Louisville, once again. Was this put out before the previous list was announced? And Louisville above West Virginia? Uh, sorry, that, that's not how it would go. West Virginia would be above Louisville. West Virginia has already been in consideration for the SEC. Next up, Baylor. Same situation. Baylor and Louisville would be really close, but West Virginia would be above those two. And then Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State should be higher, maybe above West Virginia, but West Virginia still be above Louisville and then Baylor. And then finally, Cincinnati. You have Cincinnati on this list over West Virginia. That's where I throw my hands up and say, you're just trying to disrespect West Virginia because that makes absolutely no sense at all. Cincinnati just became a group of five team. They haven't proven anything. They haven't even proven that they have a decent market. In fact, when you look at the fan bases, Cincinnati is at the very, very bottom of the Big 12. 
So that makes absolutely no sense, and it is total disrespect to West Virginia. Now you know what West Virginia has to deal with. And if you're not a West Virginia fan, maybe you don't know and you don't understand anything that I'm saying. But I'm just making a point that they're putting teams in to accept invitations to the SEC above West Virginia that shouldn't be above West Virginia. I'm okay with Clemson. I'm even okay with Miami, even though they're not in the first four in. I'm okay with Florida State, and I'm okay with Oklahoma State. But West Virginia should be number five above Louisville, Baylor, and Cincinnati. And what I'm being told is these odds are actually gonna be a wash because it's changing so much. So this was a stupid, stupid list, and they're actually starting to realize it was a stupid list. So they'll probably do away with it. So y'all let me know in the comments section what do you think happens to West Virginia? Do you think they stay in the Big 12 and the Big 12 focuses on the Pac-12 and travel just becomes even more horrific for West Virginia? Do you think they go with Notre Dame to the ACC and save the ACC and pick off from the Big 12? Remember, ESPN would prefer the ACC over the Big 12. Or do you think eventually West Virginia is just going to wait it out and they'll get the invite to the SEC? Let me know in the comments. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.